What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at striped pattern prints. There are a ton of different options to pick from. Each is going to have its own look and feel. So on today's episode, we'll run you through the most common options that we typically see available. And I'll explain to you how and the subtle ways that you can identify between each of these pattern stripes. That way the next time you're out in public, whether you're shopping or you're having a conversation with a fashionable acquaintance, you can look and feel like a pro and feel in your element discussing these stripes. What's up design family and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. When it comes to stripes, proportions are everything. Even the most subtle and small changes in the proportions and the way that the line is represented can have a huge impact on the way the finished garment is going to look. So on today's episode, you'll pretty much see that yes, most of these patterns are going to be stripe based, but the way in which the stripe is represented, whether it's a complete stripe or a shadow stripe, or it's a stripe that's going to have segments in it, is going to have a huge impact in terms of how that stripe is represented and ultimately how a finished garment is going to look. And we're going to get right into it by starting off with the pinstripe. We'll start off immediately with the pinstripe and this is going to be one of the most common stripe patterns that we see, especially on men's wear, suits and shirts. Typically this type of stripe is characterized by a very narrow and thin stripe that is non-continuous and is usually in white and gray on a much darker background. Moving on, we have the chalk stripe. Similar to the pinstripe, this type of stripe is usually represented in either a white or an off-white pattern, always on a dark background. This type of stripe pattern is extremely common on suit jackets and suit pants. It's Unlike the pinstripe in the sense, the pinstripe can be quite subtle at times, but the chalk stripe is meant to make a statement and it can be quite bold, especially when you have that contrast push and pull of the light stripe and the dark background. The last stripe pattern in this mini category is going to be the pencil stripe. This type of stripe pattern is usually categorized by two or three wide warp stripes and is usually wider than a pinstripe, but more narrow than a chalk stripe. And because of its medium level of boldness, we typically see this type of pattern used in shirt making. Next up, we have the shark skin pattern or otherwise known as pick and pick. This type of pattern is characterized by diagonal thin lines, usually with narrow spaces between them. And usually this type of pattern we see as a tonal pattern, whether it's knitted or warped or woven into the fabric itself. It is common to see on both shirts and on jackets and suit pants. Moving on, now we're going to go into the solid stripe patterns. And the first up is going to be the Bengal pattern. This is going to be one of the most common ones that we see, especially for shirt making. And this type of pattern is characterized by an evenly spaced, so a one to one solid line that is typically a quarter inch wide on a white background. So the stripe itself is typically a darker color and the background is a much lighter color. So you get a lot of push and pull there. And like I said, it's commonly used on shirts. Similar to the Bengal stripe, we have the candy stripe. Again, this is a evenly spaced solid line, an eighth of an inch wide and is usually on a white background. So again, here we're getting a dark or a vibrant stripe color on a much, much lighter background color. Last in our category of solid stripes is going to be the awning or the cabana stripe. Again, here we have an evenly spaced solid line that is a half an inch wide and is always or most often used on awning fabrics. So if you've ever been to the beach, it's that typical white and nautical blue fabric that you see used for cabanas, for tents, for umbrellas. So that's where it gets its name from. Moving on, we have the shadow stripe. This one gives a very three-dimensional effect and is characterized by a vertical colored stripe that is immediately offset with a parallel shadow stripe. So if you have your white stripe, 
Typically this type of stripe will be offset with a darker white or like a gray or sometimes even a black if you want to go extremely punchy, hence the name. So shadow stripe is a great option to give your shirt dimension and depth. And lastly, in our stripe categories, we have our rope stripe. This type of stripe is again, wider than the chalk stripe. So it's the widest segmented stripe that we have. And it's usually characterized by this thick stripe that is non-continuous where each of these segments of the stripe are actually angled, thereby resembling a rope, hence the name. Well, that is a wrap on this episode, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. By now, you should have a much better understanding of the different pattern stripe options available to you. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the pinstripe on shirts. It's extremely subtle, but at the same time, it does give this feeling and the depth to shirts and a pinstripe on or a pencil stripe on suits as well, if done right with the correct color combination can be extremely elegant and could create a very masculine looking suit. So those are my personal recommendations. Of course, now you can make the decisions on which are going to be the right options for you. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We put out great content on a week to week basis and honestly, we'd love to have you along for the ride. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, Stay awesome.